Hi, I'm Heinberg. Good to have you back. I'm in a bit of a bind. I've got to write a piece for a theater play and the rehearsal starts tomorrow at 11.30 in another town in Schwerin. The play is Wojcik and the scene is the fairground scene. And I need to write an energetic piece that shows the energy of that fairground but also the madness that is creeping up in Wojcik's head. So during rehearsals I tried out two different pieces. The first one was all in the head and it used test tone sounds and rhythms. So it sounds a bit like this. But that's a bit too deep inside the head. So I tried a different temporary track, which is an older track that I wrote on the modular. This has much more of the fairground atmosphere that um, I need to be going for, but it likes the psychological element. So it kind of fits, but then kind of doesn't. So I want to try and combine these two tracks and make something new. And by combine I mean I just want to combine the ideas behind them, not the tracks themselves. I want to create something new. I'm going to write it on the Eurorack and Hopefully I'll have something that I can use tomorrow in the rehearsal. One thing that makes this more complex is that I've got an actor on stage who is playing Morph Beats Gamelan strips. Das ist uns wohl bekannt. And the music is supposed to start with him, so he has to play a pattern, and then the rest of the music has to come in and make it big. So basically, I have to think of a melodic idea on the Gamelan strips, which I don't have with me because they are in Shireen and then write the piece around that. I want to use the Squab Hermit for that because I think it's a very fast sequencer to get like polyphonic ideas going. But <laughs> we'll see if I can manage something in the one or two good hours that I have before my eyes uh, seal shut. So I've got the OP1 hooked up to the Hermit um, and I because I think the two work very well together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just set up a clock signal. I'm going to take the tempo of the more upbeat fairground track as the tempo that I think will work and then I'm going to start building the track around that tempo and the melody that I'm going to do on the piano over there. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> So we are at 87 BPM, which is like a really slow, comfortable tempo. Maybe I'll up it later, but I think that's the thing we're going to start with. So now I'm going to set up a clock signal so I can hear something. Let's do 89. So this shall be our clock for now. I want to use the anti oscillators because that is what I used on the track that we listened before. First of all, I want to think of a melody that can be played in the gamelan strips.
That's the melody I'm gonna use. I love it. Quantize! feature on the weird oscillator. Now get that modulation also to the filter. a sort of burning feeling. Modulation also to the anti-oscillator to make it come more alive. I want to try the Piston Honda for an up-top melody through the ADAC dual voltage control. ADEC is just one of the most brutal filters that I own. This is good. This is this is good. I like this. Time for Metasonics. Makes everything more alive immediately. Do you have a spring reverb? I have a spring reverb here. Nothing does bass drums like maps. Into the R54 super module. Because the R54 super module, it's one of my favorite modules, and the reason I got it to modular, it just sounds great. It's like the D1000, only much more hi fi. So you could probably build a D1000 from the three of those in the noise source and it would sound better. And you would need a maths, so it would be bigger. So, th two maths, a VCA, yeah. I took a short break because I had to transfer the footage from the SD cards. I'm shooting the first time in 4K, which takes a lot more space and time than I was ready for. 
and I did a few things while the footage was transferring. Mainly, I did a reality check. And how I do reality checks in my studio is by switching to the speaker over here. This is an Oratone, also named the Horror Tone, a coaxial speaker from the 1970s that's just one loudspeaker that sounds to some horrible, but to me it sounds rather beautiful because it's a, a lit, an analytical instrument. It shows you the mid-range very clearly and it helps me discover arrangement issues, mixing issues very fast. So I quickly discovered that the percussion was too spacey and not rooted in the whole thing. So I changed that. So let's listen in. I turned it into more tribal thing, less spacey. Also I worked on the bass to make it less diffuse, more precise by adding timed modulation instead of random modulation. So I'm triggering the modulation at the same time I'm triggering the notes, which is better. And I did a few things to that so it sounds more like a clavinet on electricity. So I'm thinking I want to record that to tape and bring that to the rehearsal tomorrow and then work on from there. So let's commit that to tape. My studio is a bit of a mess because I'm touring, recording videos. It's uh, a <laughs> lot to keep up at the same time and try to keep everything in good shape. I'm mixing all in analog because it just sounds great and I've learned to trust in the sound of the analog mixer and the tape machine because this is really fine-tuned to how I like it to sound. So I think this is enough material that I've recorded onto tape and I think it fits the vibe better than the track that was before, the temp track, but I think I still need to add a bit of madness. So I'm gonna do a bit of test oscillator stuff. <laughs> I got it. I love it. It's basically one oscillator modulated by another plus some sort of crazy cross modulation coming from the defect switch cool I think oh, crazy and nice Broken gear is the most fun. So I think from that I can cut something up for the rehearsal tomorrow and then we're gonna see how this all goes further.
I planned to show you footage of the final scene with the track, but then something happened that is pretty common when working with theater, or film for that matter. The track didn't get used. That had two reasons. The first was timing. It came way too early in the play. It was within the first 25 minutes and the energy that it put out was just too high for the timing of the whole scene and the whole play up to that point. So, I mean, that was what the director wanted, but when you do a run through, it turned out this doesn't work out at all. So we ended up using music that composed before the rehearsals even started and that is played on the Morph Beat Gamelan strips live on stage. In fact, most of the music is now created live on stage, which I love, because it gives the whole play a more fragmentary, dreamlike, but yet very handmade and real quality, which is to me also the texture that this text has. So if you're thinking of composing for theater, don't hold your music too dear. It always has to fit in with the greater context of the play and something that might be perfectly beautiful when you listen to it at your home or works perfect for one scene, once you go to the run-throughs it just might not work and you might have to rework it or it just will end up not being used at all. But that way you can build up your own library of music and sounds that you can maybe use in different productions, different plays or just listen to for your own enjoyment. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, do leave them in the comments below and the music is available on my Patreon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Wir müssen alle sterben. Das ist uns wohl bekannt. Bestand, das ist uns wohl bekannt.